Spartan, welcome to Mint. Thank you for being on. How are you doing? Thank you, Adam. Happy to be here. Very well. How are you? Good. I'm good, man. Living the dream. I'm excited cool. for you to be on. Uh, you're the first uh, movie film project that I've come across in Web3 and got super excited about. Uh, at the time, it was called a different name, but now it's called The Film Dow. Before cool. we jump into everything, okay, who are you? What does the world need to know about you? And how did you get your start in crypto? In crypto, okay. Um, I was buying Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, from years ago. Oh, wow. And that's okay. kind of the extent of my forays into, into, into crypto. And then last year, through our mutual friend Cooper, I started um, entering into the NFT space. In And, you know, I was just buying into projects. I was finding projects that I thought were cool and buying into them. And it slowly started to, I mean, well, that's a separate subject, but that's basically it. I was, I was a collector. Um, and that was the extent of my experience in, in Web3. Besides that, I went to um, Bard for classical piano and music composition. I was composing oh, cool. operas uh, for a long time after school. And I was trying to do these animated operas, um, kind of like Fantasia, but a little bit more adult themed. And I was kind of finding that there wasn't a market for any of that. And I was kind of just like pounding away in my closet, working, working and, you know, drawing these stick figures to mm -hmm. then to animators and scoring the music to that. And I, after, you know, a few years of that, I thought, okay, well, at this point I'm just making movies. So I should move into film because I was thinking, you know, opera composers back in the day would probably be making movies if they had the technology today. So that's how I got into film. Got it. So what year was there your first crypto purchase? Cri oh, 2016 or 17 probably wow what was it what, what did you purchase do you remember and where definitely ethereum it was ethereum it specifically and i'm making an exception because i do remember in 2013 or 2014 you know some of my friends in my college room were like oh you got to buy this thing it's called bitcoin it's 300 bucks <laughs> 300 bucks a pop i was like oh, i don't know this, i think i bought one and then sold it when it when it doubled so i didn't yeah i know Damn. yeah Damn, damn, yeah. damn. So actually, your love for crypto and your love for film, how do those two worlds collide? Like, what, what's the story behind that? So it's really interesting. I have been in the process of um, the two worlds collided last year because I'm I was in the process of funding a big first feature that okay. I've been working on for a year and a half. Um, I've had the script, you know, we, we have a full animatic storyboard, we have actors cast, we have locations. And then the same thing with most projects, but specifically with, um, film, you know, the funding becomes an issue. So we had some commitments, we had cash in the bank, but not the entire budget. And when you're not doing, you know, a, there's something called pre-sales. So when mm -hmm. you have someone like, let's say Brad Pitt, you don't actually have to have the money for the movie because you have, a, if you have a commitment from them. You can go to all the territories worldwide for distribution and get guarantees. Like I will give you X million dollars for the rights to stream this or to distribute this in theaters in my territory because I know that people will come to see Brad Pitt. Mm. So since we weren't doing it that way, we had to have all the money in equity. And I was sitting there, you know, I had a few dead fellows. I had some other projects that I was in. And I was realized because this story takes place on a fan, uh, fantastical fake Mediterranean island in the 1960s called San Gaspare, which is like a bit, the germinating idea for that was uh, to do a movie about cat burglars, that's what the theme is, on a island that's a bit French, Greek, Italian, Spanish, like a Malta that never was. Mm. So it, it's this kind of weird setting that lends itself very well to creation. And so I was sitting there with Cooper and I was thinking, man, you know, I have had the storyboard artist doing these storyboards for the movie. I can send you some later for, for a year, you know, drawing every scene with me, you know, the, it's a, it's a method that we use in filmmaking to know what you're doing before you get to the set. And I was like, well, why don't we just do 10,000 citizens of this fake Island? And immediately, you know, it, clicked. it just clicked. And that's, so that was, the, that's our inaugural, that's our Genesis project. That's funding our first feature. And that's what bridged the gap between the creative world of film with the creative world of nfts got it and you said that that initial project was called what remind me the initial project was called the the actual nft collection is still called that it was called the citizen okay. sangaspare sangaspare okay 
And what we were doing, it's actually interesting the route we took because at first it was, well, let's make a movie financed by NFTs and that would be like a historic thing, mm -hmm. et cetera. And we were doing it and I slowly realized that the way to actually bring more value to the people buying in rather than just perks like, okay, you can come to set, you can be an extra in the movie, you can do X, Y, Z, that's kind of perks and kind of not really, because there's a problem with the SEC, right? You can't do this and then offer everyone a return. We went over right. numbers, and it's completely, um, it's not feasible right now at where we are with legislation. So what we did instead, uh, when I wanted to give more uh, to the people that are, were buying in was we zoomed out. And instead, we said, okay, instead of just doing one movie, this Genesis NFT collection is going to be your purchase, your share of a on of a Web three based movie studio. And that what happened was we, I would, you know, I met my, uh, I'm sure you know him as well, but I met my friend Sobi, um, and he was telling me all about this project that he had going with to buy a copy of the Dune Bible. I'm sure you saw with the Spice Town, everything that happened. Mm -hmm. And he basically called me and he said, you know, I need someone really qualified to help me make this space opera. And I was like, I'm, I'm very uniquely qualified to help you do that <laughs> <laughs> through a weird set of circumstances. And so, and I negotiated that part of, you know, we're going to make this show and we're going to hopefully sell it uh, to a strand, you know, we're taking steps to ensure that. And part of that now goes into the, to the film DAO. Um, and the idea is that what we do is, collectively decide what projects to do it's like uh any movie studio that exists in mm. real life or like a distribution house like a24 they make they make um targeted decisions about where they're going with their content and what aesthetic they're pursuing so we're doing that on mass mm. you know a thousand votes and the way we're rewarding early holders is people who buy into the genesis project and fund the first feature that we're doing um get governance tokens for th those are your governance tokens and further nft collections we do for further movies that we do you know say in in a year we want to do a western in eight months we want to do a space whatever okay. it is we do an nft collection for that but that for the people who buy in they're buying into the to the vision of the feature in the animated series we're doing the spice style so they're just getting perks for the new mm -hmm. movie and the governance tokens remain in the, and and it, it concentrates value because you can trade them on open so if people want to buy yeah. in Depends on what they want. Yeah. So, so full transparency, I did buy into this. I think uh, on initial yeah. mint, uh, which fair. actually got me excited about it, as I mentioned in the beginning. And I just want to go ahead and share my screen really quick. I want to pull this up so people can kind of get an idea of Sangaspare, okay, of, of what that really looks like. Totally. Uh, uh, yeah, so I the movie. Also, I should also give a um, give a disclaimer. This we this is the last vestige of our old. Like we have a new website coming that says the film. Cool. Now. It's the cool. same structure. Cool. Okay, cool. So I actually wanted to bring up the characters, okay? And cool. the reason why I liked, I wanted to bring up the characters because I think the the upbringing of the creation to Mint to launch to building the community that's an entire narrative that I want to run through right now, okay? Because cool. you said you met up with Coop, okay? You guys had this idea, or you had this idea. I don't know. However, it went, okay? Mm -hmm. And you ended up starting to draw out these little characters. You drew them yourself. You said no. So I, my, my storyboard artist from the movie. Okay withdrew them under my supervision okay so walk me through that process and I, i'm asking this from a very dumbed down point of view okay oh, because oh. this is intended to be like a, a way a path for other people to kind of follow because while you guys are one of the first if not the first to kind of do something like this you're not going to be the last right okay. so how can how how can someone else replicate what you just went through and approach it from a similar factor from the ideation to the creation of the graphics, to actually creating the site and doing the minting, building, like walk me through that from, from A okay. to Z. Okay, so what we did is I went to the storyboard artist and I said, I wanna do 10 categories of citizen that kind of encapsulate all the characters that we have in our story and also encapsulate life on this island in the middle of the 20th century. So from, uh, I actually, now I only see myself, but yeah, yeah. from left to right, yeah. you have fishermen, Dock workers, policemen, monks, nuns. These are all people. These are all types of people that there you go who have roles in the movie. No, these aren't the characters from the movie, but they're they are the 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 flavor of it. So we took from the IP and we made sure it was completely in the grain. There's a fisherman, for example, and there's yeah. I think there's eight hundred fishermen of varying costumes and faces, etc. Nuns, aristocrats, and there are rebels that has something specific to do with the. Um, with the story, there's some uh, sailors, aristocrats with a special frame, bourgeois. Mm -hmm. 
And so what we did, it's really interesting and it took forever, peasants. Um, we drew facial features for three age groups and two genders, right? So we had, mm -hmm. and f let, let's just take old men, for example. We had, I think, 20 types of eyes, 20 types of nose, 20 types of mouth for each um, category, w for each crossing of age and gender. And then also for each um, uh, category, a uh, profession, we called them, we had uh, accessories and costumes and backgrounds. So you distinguish them by that means, and then also, and then you randomly assemble the same facial features. Um, and then you, you don't see them here, but there's, you know, rare, there's like North African citizens to, you know, represent its place in the Mediterranean between Europe and Africa. We have East African citizens as well, fewer in number, but, mm -hmm. uh, and that was the process of at least, uh, coming up with how we're going to do this yeah. so that there's an app uh on uh a designing app called procreate that my storyboard artist piotr uses for um for storyboards and for drawing and so we did it on there and then we exported the png files of every single um every single trait so that's i think it's something like 800 maybe more wow and then my coder, uh, my, uh, our programmer, Vin, and I basically sat in his apartment for days doing citizen, category by category. Okay, now we're going to do um, middle-aged uh, bourgeois women. Okay, now we're going to do old male dock workers. Now we're going to do young North African um, uh, bourgeois. You know, it was a whole yeah. Was a whole, yeah. Wow. So, okay. So I'm looking at mine right now. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and start sharing a, a new screen really quick, just so I can pull up which one that I have, because I genuinely don't know what, what I have. And which okay. one. So I want you to, I want you to share with me. So I minted this oh, one wow. on mint day. So what is this one? Wow. You that's, that's a, first of all, it's a beautiful one. That's a old fisherman. That's an old, uh, Sangasparian fisherman. Actually, you you got lucky because he has a trident, and that's an accessory, and not all of them have accessories. So. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. And then uh, on the website, you can see like your fisherman, not specifically him, but the category of fisherman has the uh, you know I wrote lore for each that explains the island and uh -huh. also explains the category. So like you have your own bit of lore and what the fisherman, what it means to be a fisherman on Sangasquari. But that's a great one. That's That, that is a great cool. one. It kind of looks like me too. I, I really like it. I like there it. All I'm missing <laughs> is the pitchfork and the eye patch and the cigarette. I think the rest can I can. on all of those things. I'll yeah. send you <laughs> Amazing. So what does that mean for me now? Okay, again, from a dumb point of view, what does that yeah. mean for me as a collector, as a holder? You mentioned because I'm part of the original Mint, the strategy yeah. that you guys are using. Why is that important? Like walk me through that. Totally. And keep in mind, this is for the future as well. It's not just because you're part of the initial mint. It's because you hold a token from the Genesis Mint. Got so it. you can sell it and the and your your um, uh, perks would go on to the person who buys it. Got it. So as a Genesis holder, as someone who hold, holds a fisherman, you have one vote in the ecosystem of our, movie, of our film studio, of the film DAO. Okay. And what that means is... As we move forward, there's going to be, especially, and there's two levels. There's the micro and the macro. On the macro level, you're going to be voting on, hey, guys, what's an idea that we want to we want to pursue with film? What's an aesthetic? Do we want to do a cowboy movie? Do we want to do a space movie? Do we want to do a, a family drama? If we do, what kind of script are we going for? Do we have a script that we like? Do we know a screenwriter that's doing great work? Do we, X, Y, Z. Do we ha know a filmmaker that is has a great idea for a movie and just can't get funding? Uh -huh. Let's discuss together and vote on where we allocate DAO funds into the next project. Got it. On a micro level, holding that allows you voting on smaller details within movies. So, for example, in our Genesis, in our inaugural movie, The Salt Ruby Affair, that's set on San Gaspare, the uh, cat burglar movie, you, you're, there's going to be voting throughout pre-production and production on aesthetic ideas. Like it can be as small as what color should we use for these? Um, you know, we, the production designer will offer up two vetted choices. Should we do mm -hmm. blue or red for these? Let's let the Dow decide, but then it can get bigger. Okay. We have two choices for this um, role with two very qualified actors. Who do you guys see in the role better? Got it. Got um, it. You can come as, and be an extra in the movie. You can uh, you can come to worldwide premiere. We're gonna hold premieres worldwide that are just for DAO members. Um, 
which is going to be great. So there's a whole bevy of different perks that come from holding on to the Genesis Mint. Spartan, let me ask you, why do you think a certain level of community involvement is essential for the future of films, the future of, of movie movie production? Is it essential? Do you think it's important? Do you think this community stuff, not not a gimmick, but do you think it has the potential to actually like change the way things are are handled and done currently? I think that in film, it's a bit of not a trick question, but it is a bit the thing is in film, too many cooks in the kitchen. Like filmmaking is absolutely not a democracy. Any filmmaker will tell you that. It just doesn't work, right? You have to make de- you have to make decisions on whom on on whom you're delegating um responsibility to for various aspects right so you can't have a democracy where you're all deciding on how what to on how the cinematographer should be lighting a scene and what 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 lenses they should be using it just doesn't work because a it sucks up time and in film you know there's a metric where it's literally how many dollars per minute are you spending on set so that Mm -hmm. doesn't work what I do think works and what and that would be a gimmick because nothing would get done. What I do think works is democratizing and making more egalitarian the way that those delegations are made, right? So rather than just being a small group of people that are deciding, let's do this, let's do this, our algorithm says this, let's do this. It becomes a group of hopefully like-minded individuals mm-hmm. who are in a, in this case, discord together saying, what's a general vibe we want to push towards and what's a general vibe that we want to encourage in filmmaking and what's and who are the people to whom we should delegate those responsibilities who is a director who will execute their vision and we can give leeway and funding to execute if that makes sense i think yeah. that's what becomes not necessary because as we all know filmmaking you know hollywood's doing just fine movies will continue to be right made. You know, it's not that it's a necessity that we're filling. What we are doing is offering and creating a cool and engaging alternative to what it is right now. Because the average person that's buying NFTs isn't going to be able to walk into Warner Brothers and say, well, I think we should make this. You know, you can tweet at them, but I don't, you know, what does that do? Whereas here, you, you know, you buy an NFT and then your voice matters in content creation. So you're on the stance. So on one end, you said these are the few reasons why we need it. But on the other hand, you're saying, well, Hollywood doesn't need crypto per se, necessarily. If it does need it, we I don't think we found the way yet because the okay. the in my also keep in mind, I'm not a finance guy. Yeah. I'm not a, you know, I produce by necessity, but I'm yeah. a director, I'm a writer. Yeah. So I'm not going to be as privy and as as understanding of like the future of where this could go mm-hmm. than someone who has more experience in that in that specific field. But from my viewpoint, the most the the most exciting the most exciting thing that crypto can bring to filmmaking is completely decentralizing the financing aspect of it and not having mm. you know big 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 pressure to get financing from one person or from one studio right but the problem with it that i've been you know led to understand from the lawyers is that that's not going to be solved anytime soon because they you know when you invest in a movie if i make a contract for you adam to come invest in my movie with us dollars i have to vet you you have to be an accredited investor Mm -hmm. sure there's no links to terrorism um all this stuff that you can't do with crypto so i I don't know when that when that you know comes to fruition. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm curious to hear your your point of view really quick because you focus on a lot of the production the writing side, a lot of the creative aspects of work. I wonder mm-hmm. if inserting a level of community could actually be a distraction versus a way to focus. And by the way, the reason I say that is because when you set up these these systems of governance and this system of, of vocalization uh, through one vote. One NFT, one token equals one vote or a say of some sort. I'm curious to hear how does that actually change your creative process and your your system and your 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 structure of bringing an idea from your mind to paper and then right. bringing that to life to an actual product, right? And right. does the community slow that down? Does the community speed it up? 
Is it more so engaging your audience and keeping them in the process? Cause it's a better, it's not a sales tactic, but it's more of a way to kind of let people feel that they are involved, which makes them want even more. So okay. there's different, there's different elements of this. What do you think? I think it's the third option. I think it neither okay. slows it down nor speeds it up. I think it, the, the key thing there is the engagement and the, and the feeling that, that you have even a small voice because, mm -hmm. you know, we're not making, we're not pretending that all of a sudden everyone that's involved is going to have a hands-on role in making the movie. It's completely unrealistic. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. so it's not like you, and this, I'm not just speaking for myself, but any filmmaker that, that we end up working with, it's not like they're sitting there waiting for approval on the shape of a mug to put in a, in a scene. Right. So that, that wouldn't be determined by the community. Right. That wouldn't be determined. The only things that would be determined from an actual this is, from an actual production point of view are what the team requ request input on. I think the key value that something like the film DAO brings isn't micromanagement, but general guidance and general aesthetic choices, and then delegation, creative delegation to the people that actually, you know, spend their life doing it. Um, the the mm. micromanagement part is i think a fun perk but it's and I, it would be gimmicky if 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 it was if you were saying you know come make a movie and have every decision made by the dow you know you'd make it maybe in five years and you'd waste yeah. a lot of money yeah but the key thing there is the general guidance and and the and the feeling that you belong to a community where you know we're having private events um private premieres for these movies that we make all together that only the dow members can come to got it you can come to the set whereas it would be and be an extra in the movie that no one else could be in. And you're also deciding which movies get made, but not, you know, the color of someone's dress. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. a, an art, that's a, that's a wardrobe person. You know, it gets me thinking that, okay, Spider-Man is the recent movie that everybody has gone crazy over across mm -hmm. TikTok, Instagram, all the memes. Uh, I think even in terms of sales, it's like done exceptionally well. I've yet to see it, but I wonder what an established franchise an established movie studio uh, how that could like for more of these established uh, organizations, how crypto could actually benefit them, how NFTs could benefit Hollywood in that regard, because they already have a system that works, right? Mm -hmm. They already produce stuff that their fans love, yeah. right? And I wonder how could you take that up a notch? Maybe that's the missing link that's preventing it from going to the next level where right now fans love it, but mm -hmm. how could you make them like insanely obsessed? even though some of them already are, you know what I mean? And, and I'm, no. I'm approaching and I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. You know, I hate to be a pessimist, okay. but, and this is really where the independent side of it comes to, comes okay. to like, that's why we're doing it in a way that's so engaging is because it's indie, you know, and it's not going to be made mm -hmm. if without this. The thing is with a big, you know, if Spider-Man, if, you know, when Marvel does something like that, it ends up just being merchandise. That's what it is. Cause they don't need, the, the the nft sales for example to fund the production of the movie they yeah. have 150 million dollars to throw at it they don't care you know yeah. so in the end i think for big pictures like that nfts and crypto become marketing tactics that just add to their mm -hmm. um yeah you know there's there's a few like train of thoughts uh, that kind of stem from what you just said okay when I had a Dio, who's the founder of Glass Protocol, okay, it's like like a decentralized YouTube yeah. essentially. After we stopped recording, we had some like uh, post call like conversations, and our conversation kind of sparked an idea for me, and I and I presented it to him. I was like, okay, imagine there was like a, a mirror, you know, mirror.xyz, yeah. sound.xyz. Okay, imagine it was like a, the, you had a format like that, but you would invite Sundance Music Festival uh, producers and directors, and you would actually be able to sell their movies as NFTs, but done so in a way where you have to watch the movie first and mm -hmm. maybe after watching it or before watching it. At some point, you bring more of these independent directors that already have some form of, of class. They already have some form of establishment that yeah. have gotten their respect in the underground world. I'd assume, yeah. and again, I'm approaching this because I don't know anything about it, but, no, totally. you know, but, but if there was a way to kind of so you form a DAO or you you issue assets that then allow you to form a DAO through. Uh, yeah. But the way you kind of mint those assets is by creating a more uh, surreal watching experience digitally. Right. right. And you could watch the movie online live with a bunch of other people 
And then maybe in in between the movie, there's chances to actually buy NFTs or even afterwards, once the movie finishes, you can buy the NFT, co-own it. Or maybe that even works with trailers. That'd be sick. Like if you could if you could preview trailers and then that would allow for the minting of NFTs for people who want to be a part of it and then form a community. You know, I don't know. I'm like, my mind is spiraling now. I'm actually curious because I have some thoughts on that, but I'm curious in this situation, is the is the movie uh, uh, like it could it be infinite mints or could only one person mint the act the movie as an actual nft it would have to be uh, a limited amount of mints right okay. so you have to think about what's the goal is the movie already produced okay right. if the movie's already produced and you do like a watch event where it's globally accessible and then you have a bidding for the one nft equals the ownership to the movie and then you yeah. can sell the rights and everything of the movie through the nft live post uh post watching experience or you can take it from the point of view where you issue a trailer, right? Like a like a like a preview, right? Yeah. And or you you issue what did the office do? I forgot. I'm like butchering the names. The office did um it did a pilot, right? You can issue a pilot of a TV right. show, right. and then after that, you could like mint NFTs based off how you got if if you got excited about the pilot, you could buy co ownership of it or sure. fandom whatever the medium is, and then be a part of that process integrally. You know, as the kind of the rest yeah, of the season it, develops. It's such like it's a it's an amazing idea, and I've been seeing this kind of model work with music, right? With songs. Yeah, yeah. I hate to be a contrarian, but yeah, no, like, go. The producer yeah. side of my head is thinking about this. So let's go worst case scenario, right? Okay. Let's say you spend. Let's just pick a number. Let's say you spend three million dollars making a small movie, right? It's a small budget, but it's a lot of money, right? Okay, you spend three million dollars, and instead of going and selling it to Netflix or to uh, go ha- hiring a sales agent and selling it across the uh, throughout the world for various amounts for various period periods of time, you decide to do this right, and you stream it, and it's just it's a high gas day or it's off whatever it is, and four hundred people mint for 0. 0.2 Ethereum, let's just say, right? Hypothetically, sure. okay, you made a couple hundred thousand dollars, right? And now you've given ownership legally right you have to work out the way that you do that that's a whole mm-hmm. other problems. you've given ownership of this movie to all those people that minted it and now you've cut yourself off from the other avenues because now there's a chain of title problem who owns this how many hundreds of people own this if i dis- distribute this in italy am i incurring legal risk from one of the 200 people that minted mm-hmm. that sue me for presenting their work without there's something yeah. they own without permission. Oh my, like headache, that, complete headache. No, you can't headache, even... like financial ruin. Yeah. Financial yeah. Ruin. Um, I don't know. I'm also separate subject, but same yeah. subject. there's two types of art, right? There's temporal and non-temporal. Okay. So non-temporal art is what's been, what NFTs have been flourishing in for so long. So you have photography, painting, uh, drawing and sculpture, the, you know, those kind of things where in one second you experience the entire work of art you can spend time looking at the small details but basically you walk into a room you see there's a jackson pollock Uh there's a a board ape i understand what's happening in one moment it's all there in a frame then there's temporal art and that's it takes place over time it's music it's storytelling it's literature it's poetry and these kind of things are harder to break up into nfts because you know like okay how do you do a music video how do you do a movie do you mint different seconds or different frames to people well that's just turning it into non-temp that's just turning it into pictures so it's interesting and i'm you know i'm of the camp that doesn't believe in kind of token gating access to to films mm. right so you you know you can look at an nft that you have of a of like a pfp project and anyone can look at that but you can see that it's yours that you can see that it belongs to someone but you're not barring people from looking at it you people can still see the art and if you make a movie you spend millions of dollars making a movie i don't think it's right to have a you know a lot of people are trying to or not a lot of people but some people are trying to do a system whereby you uh belong to or you mint it and then only you can watch it or you you belong to an organization or it's token gated, so only people who have an NFT, I think Stoner Cats was doing that, can watch this. Mm -hmm. I'm of the camp that's saying you made a work of art, it was financed through, it was born out of a Web3 kind of cradle, but, and that's where the money came from, but go and give it to the world, you know, profit from it, and do more stuff 
that and find ways to reward the people and the holders that brought it to fruition but don't stop a work of art from being seen because it exists in a temple and from a point a to, uh, to point b mm. that makes sense? yeah that makes a lot of sense you know that gets me thinking there's almost as if there needs to be uh like why combinator came out with this uh, legal contract called safe okay i know yes yeah, yeah. a safe so it's almost as if like there needs to be a safe but for movies right but from the point of view of outlining what's controlled by the audience like read like really getting granular about what ownership means so that you can still have the positive outcomes of crowdfunding of participation of contributions but yeah. without like with by and by bypassing those uh those hurdles that you mentioned so it's almost right. as if like every single every single nft or every every single drop uh, and I feel like this could this these types of legal terms could be applied to more and more community type of of things beyond film, but almost as if there needs to be some type of YC inspired safe, but for more of these crowdfunded film NFTs or right. crowdfunded movies uh, through NFTs, etc. I'd be interested to see how you do it. You know, we have a great legal team, and they're basically saying, you know, that could be an interesting avenue. But the way, at least for the next few years, is you cannot promise any returns, personal returns, and like we're still. I don't even, well, no, I can't say too much, I guess, but <laughs> at least if it's going into a, a DAO's treasury that's not being paid out to the holders and you know, you're not spending it on anthrax. Yeah. You know, but if you have like, your mission, like we're making movies, we're not doing anything else. But we're we're not buying anthrax. <laughs> yeah. <It's> okay. <laughs> anyway. I love it. <laughs> What's up guys, Adam Levy here. Sorry for the quick pause. I wanted to give some love to our two NFT sponsors that are making this episode a reality. They are Coinvise and Polygon Studios. On Coinvise, you can create a personal or community owned social token on Ethereum or Polygon. Coinvise also helps you create incentives through token rewards and bounties, NFT business models, and bot integrations for Discord. Discover more today by visiting coinvise.co. Polygon Studios is the gaming and NFT arm of Polygon, who's focused on growing the blockchain gaming and NFT industry while bridging the gap between Web 2 and Web 3 gaming. The Polygon Studios ecosystem comprises highly loved blockchain games like OpenSea, Upshot, Avagachi, Zed Run, Skyweaver, Decentraland, and Decentral Games. If you're a gamer, builder, or NFT creator looking to join the Polygon Studios ecosystem, get started today by visiting polygonstudios.com. All right, back to the episode. I'm curious to see when Hollywood, like when when a big mainstream movie or TV show will implement NFTs. Um, the Matrix did it. The Matrix uh, Resurrection. Oh, they, yeah, that's they, right. Nif, uh, yeah. Nifty's did that. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, as I said, it's merchandise. It's, yeah. it's uh, it, you buy it. The movie's been made. You buy it after the fact. And you're like, oh, mm. look at that. Mm. You know? Which I'm not, I'm not just counting like, you know, I used to buy Star, Star Wars um, action figures after at, I'd go to City Walk in at Universal City Walk, watch Star Wars, and then go to the store with the with a spaceship crashed mm -hmm. into it and buy Star Wars, you know, yeah. toys. Yeah. You know, I think the number one reason why Hollywood would need NFTs, why they would need crypto is merely for funding, crowdfunding, right? Because yeah, I think it's fine. that's not I mean, it is Hollywood, but that's that's just it. That's what we're doing. But we're in we're independent. It's not. Yeah. The Hollywood establishment. They don't need right, it. Right. They have the you know, they have so the, the independence. Yeah. It's yeah. it's the smaller people that, you know, right now, if you're not getting funding from a production company or a studio, you have to go to you have to either do pre-sales, so somehow negotiate a, a actor with enough clout to get pre-sales to come on board and sign on to your project, or mm -hmm. you have to go to a high net worth individual or a group of them or several of them in various bits and get the funding piece by piece. Right. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is where it comes to fruition especially once you build a platform you know this is the hardest hurdle we're doing with the first one but once we do this once we deliver we're also doing the spice dow stuff that's going to be even faster you know so once uh -huh. you deliver that then you have your own platform to be like well we've we've done this it you know come so on it's board. less it's less about hollywood it's more so independent filmmakers need crypto that's where it comes into play the same way that you know justin bieber doesn't need to make a his songs into nfts i'm sure it would be very profitable and fun for him to do it but i don't know whose label is but anybody you know whoever, whoever his label is paying for everything and he doesn't want for anything creatively he can make a phone call and have any studio in the world open up to him with any producers etc and it's the same thing with with major motion pictures 
with big budgets, they don't need it. But with us and with, you know, people like, you know, I think, you know, Grady, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, with Grady, like that's literally like a perfect fit to like sound and uh, and with Daniel and everything that's happening there. Yeah. That's just the perfect opportunity to say, well, let's see what the people who like my music want, you know, and let's see what they say. So does that same, does that line of thinking also apply to music? So established artists don't need crypto. It's more so the independent artists that need crypto. And I only ask this from a, again, from a very point, a point of view where, okay, let's see what someone like Royal is doing uh justin right. blau's platform where he just do right. he's doing the nas drop nas is an established right. artist he has That's money true. like he has support That's and true. then you see individuals like you just mentioned daniel allen right who's right. who just started making music who just had like his third live performance right who spent totally. covid getting into the deep like the rabbit hole of of uh production. of production etc yeah. yeah thank you so does that line of, does it still apply you think or because do people want Nas NFTs? Do people want to own Nas's music? It's a very, I, mean, I guess, like I'm very. Gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say no comment, not because okay. I don't have an opinion, but because I think my opinion isn't um, educated enough, specifically in that, to comment correctly on it and, yeah. and not sound ignorant. You know? But here's the thing: I don't think anybody knows. Right. And that's the point that I'm getting at. Because it's so new, True. because True. it's so fresh. This was Royal's first drop. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I, I and like seeing what sounded, what uh mm -hmm. what catalog is doing, all these other platforms, right? Yeah, it's all like in the moment experimentation. It's really testing totally what do is. people want to own, what do people care totally about? Is. Right. So yeah. I think you approaching from a no comment. Knows. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, I agree that I think nobody knows, you know, but I think that the people that are building in it know a little bit better and can you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't expect Daniel to come on and tell and say what he thinks the logistics of 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 selling distribution rights on an nft based mu um movie are mm -hmm. but that's not because it, it's not there isn't uh over um overlap but it's just for example i personally working in the film industry know what distribution is for that you know what i mean but you know i see capital records right over there through the window but i don't know what goes on in there and yeah I don't so I, I don't know, like the traditional model that could then be supplanted by the Web3 model. Yeah. I, you know, you know, yeah. yeah make, no, that, that makes. Uh, for, yeah, for sure. I hear you. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing that comes to mind. Um, so just for context, you name drop Grady, you name drop Daniel Allen. Just for everybody that's listening, Grady was a part of season four, um, mid season four. So was Daniel Allen. Um, so definitely go check out those episodes, too. Yeah. But um, when it comes to, I guess. Let's talk about like more short form videos. Let's talk about more YouTube for a second, okay? Yeah. Um, do you imagine someone, a creator like Mr. Beast, using NFTs as a vehicle for crowdfunding to help bring something like the Squid Games episode that he did to life? Yeah. So short form, I think, is much more interesting from a financial point of view, right? Because, and you know. Uh, it's not that I can't say it because I'm not doing it. So I guess it's fine. But like the idea is with a $5 million uh, motion picture with big actors and, you know, distribution rights all around the world, that's very public and very easy to crack down on. You know what I mean? But like, are we all sure on the legalities of Daniel selling the right streaming rights to his album? I'm personally not. I don't know what, what those are, but mm -hmm. it, it's a little, a little, it's easier to go under the radar when you're not, you know, spending five to 10 million on something. So with short form videos, you have an opportunity to kind of like, it's, it's, it's the, it's from, from my perspective, it's the transition from the web two Patreon model into web three, where it's not just look at me, help me, or look at me and support me. It's can be a part of this and support me, but also kind of profit from it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And fly under the radar with that kind of stuff with with smaller with shorts and with music videos i think interesting huh do you ever see a world where shorts will be published on chain and there'll be an entire platform like youtube yes yes that's strictly uh, whether on ethereum salon wherever it may be yes 100 percent. and the reason is because to make a like that same viewing experience that you described before right that doesn't work when you're trying to recoup 10 million dollars from making a big movie right 
But when you spent 20 grand making a short film, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, that that works out. Yeah. Does yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. That makes that makes sense. I'd be curious. Yeah. I also I, I'd also be interested in like because a lot of sh like TikTok shorts, all these very uh, 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 short form videos, they incorporate right. elements of music. Very, very, yeah. very short form videos. But, yeah. but they incorporate elements of music as well, right? So the way yeah. their kind of interface is set up is obviously you have the, uh, the video and at the bottom you have like the link for the sound, right? right? And that makes you think like, okay, that component down the line will be another element on chain. And it makes you think whether... There's going to be specific platforms that just link with video platforms and right. all the all the streaming will be traced on chain and how they kind of intertwine across all these different videos and yeah. it will sync back to one NFT. I and mean, I think sound is building towards that, even if they don't plan on it or think, I mean, it's so early for them as well, but like that's something that they could easily, easily implement at some mm -hmm. point within the year, I think, personally. Sound, you're saying? Yeah, and or anyone that's already working even in these in this in this kind of in this in this like, I feel like the 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 farther one goes down on one route of that, like you're talking about merging the music and the video NFT portions of it, and mm -hmm. it one, the further one goes down on one route, the easier the transition becomes because you have so much experience with how it works, and, it, and essentially it's the same technology. So you just look over the little chasm and you say, okay, well now let's bring it into this as well. Mm -hmm. And with short form mm -hmm. stuff, you know, you're flying under the radar. It's it's dynamic. There's like there's so much volume. You know that I don't I don't have the numbers, but um, can we can you even imagine the like the difference between the amount of short films coming out every month compared to feature films? It's mm -hmm. Probably you know, be insane. Tens yeah. of thousands to one. Yeah, yeah. More. When do you think movies will have more of its limelight in Web three? How far away are we from that? Man, I think we're 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 doing it. You know, I think the second that we're so we're still minting. You know, we we're doing a slow slow mint, which I'm happy with because everyone that's coming in is quality. You know, it's quality. They're either re-listing for ten. We're minting for point one. They're either re-listing for ten Ethereum or they're not listing, and they're just excited to be part of it long term. So, which is great. But you know, the second we mint out and we go and make this movie in Greece, and then it like actually worked that's 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 huge you know that's mm -hmm. a talking point a all around the world and b shows other people that are trying to do it like hey if you have a good idea for a movie this is possible mm -hmm. or come to us and we'll help you you know what i mean because now we've done it twice mm -hmm. yeah i one thing that i'm personally excited about is seeing the rise of like music videos on chain yeah. um and also using yeah. nfts as a vehicle to crowdfund an entire album like daniel allen did he except he did an ep but mm -hmm. with elements of uh like video creation video development i know daniel did this yeah. with with uh the images for his album right Correct. um and he also for sure used some of that money to create the backdrops that he used for his ep release um right. uh what is it a couple days ago so i'd be curious to see music videos particularly and linking the audio on chain to the video on chain and what that would look like another thing i'm super curious about that i'd love your take on is all these creators are having different forms of uh tokens being issued on their behalf okay on their behalf by their by their say of course but they have their mirror campaigns they have their music nfts they're going to have their tickets that will likely be on chain they're going to have their fandom and merch yeah. they're going to have characters that might live in the metaverse they're going to have all these different components mm -hmm. how do you construct something whatever that something is in a way where all value accrues back to one asset does it well, need to be does it need to accrue back to one asset that's easy for us because with a with an artist, we keep using Daniel as an example, but like as Daniel, you know, that's a human, that's a person that's had that has all these different uh, avenues and different partnerships and different uh, platforms and all this stuff. With the studio, it's quite simple. You know, that's why we put the voting rights into the Genesis project. You just stream it all back into that original token, which as we move forward gets more and more ingrained in the process of making the movies and also more and more perks with the more stuff that comes out so you just keep putting it back because then well i actually don't have anything else to say after that that was 
<laughs> well, no, I mean, you're you're onto something. Okay, definitely referencing Daniel. Okay, let's look back at his thing um, mm-hmm. where he had the overstim campaign on Mirror. Okay, he has the DAO around mm-hmm. uh, the social token that was created for him. And then he issued a sound drop. He sold catalog songs. He also issued an album art. Um, and he's soon going to do like merch and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And all that, like 50% of everything generated goes back to the overstim DAO, the treasury, the multi-sig, okay, okay. right? Yeah. But I, I'm curious, like, is that rightfully presented in the price of his social token, which I think there's a Uniswap pool already. And I'm getting way more technical right. than I, I initially need. But <laughs> yeah, I and I asked this in a very in a, in a way where I'd be curious to see how this applies to movies, because I don't know the different elements of movies. I know there's obviously the movie itself. OK, I know there's merch that comes from the movie. There's action figures that come from the movie. There's all mm-hmm. these different things that can accrue revenue. Uh, Mm -hmm. as a result of the movie studio DAO that helps bring a project to life right so what does that look like from from your point of view so the revenue if something is native to the DAO right so say we make an idea for a movie we write the script we Mm -hmm. hire directors we build everything right then the DAO would own the all the right all the revenue streams in perpetuity so if Mm -hmm. action figures are made even not on chain that goes back into the DAO any NFT Mm -hmm. question out of a movie goes back into the DAO treasury. It's very, it's not even like a new thing. It's just the same as if, you know, Marvel Studios releases XYZ movie and XYZ movie has XYZ merch and yeah. video games and whatever it is. It all just, mm-hmm. you know, it all goes back into the central place. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. What are some projects you're excited about bringing to life beyond this, this initial one that I bought, for example? Okay, well, you know, then you get into me not as a founder or a producer, but I'm, you know, my main thing, I'm a writer and a director and I, right. and I make music, and I act in my movies. And yeah, so the I have, you know, six movies ready to go. I'm huh. not, not going to tell you the log lines because <laughs> I'm, I'm so, but they're, fun, you know, they're fantastical. You know, my kind of style is, you know, my two heroes, you know, besides Beethoven, Brahms, Mozart, Bach, Wagner, all, you know, composers. But in terms of storytelling, when I was a kid, um, my, my two favorites were always Miyazaki and, and Wes Anderson and Woody Allen. I said two favorites, but you know. Then <laughs> you list like 10. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that kind of like bringing the fantastical el- element into what could be real world uh, situations. So, you know, I have a few movies um, that from on a concept stage that are ready to, to go after this. It's just, I can't put any thought into any of them. One's on ancient Greece, one's on the moon. One, you know, there's, it's going to be fun, but at a certain point you just have to focus on doing the first one because in any creative endeavor like this, the first one is the one where the first big one, you know, I've done a ton of shorts and commercials and et cetera, but the first big one is the one where you have to overcome the most hurdles and then everything gets progressively easier once you've delivered on an idea, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes that makes complete sense, for sure. I I'm curious to see how 2022 plays out for film, uh, for movies, short form, mid form, long form. I'm super excited for what you're doing at the Film DAO. I'm super excited for the project that I minted, um, sure. and I'm I'm excited for you in general. I, I like to see more of this type of like creative energy entering crypto, and it's a pleasure for me to like cover this stuff as well. So it's a pleasure to th- talk about. Yeah, yeah, so so thank you for being on. Uh, before I let you go, where can we find you? Where can we learn more about what you're doing? Um, yeah. Give me the give me the spiel. The, our Twitter is uh, the Film Dow, T H E F I L M D A O. Um, with same for our Discord. Uh, our website is thefilmdow.io. Uh, that should be up in the next couple of days. I'm sure this won't cool. uh, for a couple of days anyway. Um, that's us. We're we're there. We're having fun. We're talking about movies sick come join the conversation we have oh along with the blockbuster dow and the hollywood oh, DAO, we didn't even talk about blockbuster dow yeah we didn't. i mean it's interesting what they're doing um you know i talked <laughs> to the founder a lot i i think they're best they're best because you know <clears throat> in the end you don't you don't know what block you know if you can buy a blockbuster if you can buy the rights to the the branding of it there's a lot of stuff that goes into that i think they're most interesting avenue i was talking to you know i'm in the discord as well i'm in the group is um a streaming service much like what you're saying web3 based streaming it's a different conversation but 
we I've been hosting a film X Web Three Wednesday every Wednesday mm. from uh, the Film DAO's account. We're bringing on the Hollywood DAO and the Blockbuster DAO mm. to the kind of like we're going to be the trifecta that just does this every week because there are no mm. voices in the film Web Three mm -hmm. world. So every Wednesday we're going to be doing that. Sweet. I talk film. Yeah. Sick, dude. Dude, thank you for being on. Uh, we should we should us. do this again in a few months and, and do a I'm catch done. up and see where the project's at, where the film DAO's at, et cetera. So I'm thank done. you, man. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you later, brother. Peace.